Thank you, Chairman, sir, for allowing me to speak on speaker, sir, for allowing me to speak on the presidential address. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. I felt that the presidential address should have been a strategic address, a address that spoke to India about where we are and where we should be going. What are the challenges we are facing? What are the difficulties we are facing? And what is the potential direction in which we can go? Unfortunately, the presidential address was a long list of things that the government claims to have done, but didn't really contain the deeper strategic issues that we would have liked to see. Also, the presidential address didn't touch a couple of central challenges facing our country. And that's what I would like to discuss today. To me, it seemed that the presidential address was a list of bureaucratic ideas instead of a strategic vision. It looked to me as if it had been constructed not by a vision of leadership, but by a group of bureaucrats who had simply to put something down on paper. So what did the presidential address miss? What did the presidential address not speak about? What did the presidential address hide from the people of India? I think there are three fundamental things that were not spoken about in the presidential address. The first, and what I consider to be the most important, is the idea that there are now two Indias. There is now no longer one India. There, is, there are two Indias. One India is for the extremely rich people, for those who have immense wealth, for those who have immense power, for those who do not need a job, for those who do not need water connections, electricity connections, but for those who control the heartbeat of the country. And then another India. Another India. Yeah. <laughs> आपको नेता जब यहां बोलने उठेंगे हम भी इस तरह की बाधा डालेंगे ये आपको समझा रहे हैं चेतावनी दे रहे हैं ऐसा नहीं हम लोग डरे हुए नहीं हैं हम अपना बात please, रखना please, चाहते हैं अधिकार है हमारा प्लीज प्लीज नो नो प्लीज बैठिए बोलने सभी अध्यक्ष महोदय एंड फॉर फॉर माय फ्रेंड्स इन द इन द गवर्नमेंट आई वांट टू मेक इट क्लियर दैट द स्पिरिट ऑफ व्हाट आई एम सेइंग इज नॉट वन ऑफ क्रिटिसिज्म the spirit with which I speak is one of discomfort with the status, the state of our country. And the spirit with which I speak is one where I am worried about what is happening to the country. So you must not take it as a criticism. Take it as a citizen of the country who is concerned about what is going on. तो 
दो हिंदुस्तान बन रहे हैं एक अमीरों का हिंदुस्तान और दूसरा गरीबों का हिंदुस्तान और इन दो हिंदुस्तानों के बीच में खाई बढ़ती जा रही है आपने अभी देखा होगा अभी दो स्पीकर्स ने बात की मगर आपने यह नहीं कहा कि रोजगार ढूंढने के लिए उत्तर प्रदेश में बिहार में रेलवे की नौकरी के लिए वहां पे युवाओं ने क्या किया और क्या हुआ इसके बारे में आपने नहीं बोला गरीब हिंदुस्तान के पास आज रोजगार नहीं है प्रेसिडेंशियल एड्रेस में बेरोजगारी के बारे में एक शब्द नहीं था और पूरे हिंदुस्तान में आज हिंदुस्तान का युवा रोजगार ढूंढ रहा है हर स्टेट में उत्तर प्रदेश बिहार सब जगह हिंदुस्तान का युवा एक ही चीज मांग रहा है रोजगार हमें दे दो और आपकी सरकार नहीं दे पा रही आपको मैं आंकड़ा देना चाहता हूं इस पिछले साल तीन करोड़ युवा रोजगार खोए हैं आप बात करते हो रोजगार देने की 2021 में तीन करोड़ युवा रोजगार खोए हैं 50 साल से सबसे ज्यादा बेरोजगारी आज हिंदुस्तान में है आपने मेक इन इंडिया की बात की स्टार्टअप इंडिया की बात की मगर जो रोजगार हमें हमारे युवाओं को मिलना चाहिए वो नहीं मिला और जो था वो गायब हो गया और ये सच्चाई है और इस सच्चाई को आप ही पहचानते हो क्योंकि आपने भी अपने भाषणों में रोजगार के बारे में कुछ नहीं कहा कितना रोजगार पैदा किया गया है किस प्रकार किया गया है उसके बारे में आपने नहीं बोला और आप बोल भी नहीं पाएंगे क्योंकि अगर आप बोलेंगे तो हिंदुस्तान का युवा आपकी ओर देख के कहेगा कि ये मजाक कर रहे हैं तो ये स्थिति पैदा कैसे हुई ये दो हिंदुस्तान पैदा कैसे हुए रोजगार रोजगार स्मॉल और मीडियम इंडस्ट्री और जो हमारा इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर है उधर बनता है लाखों करोड़ लाखों करोड़ रुपया आपने उनसे छीनकर हिंदुस्तान के सबसे बड़े अरबपतियों को दिलवा दिया आपने पिछले सात साल में अनऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर और स्मॉल और मीडियम इंडस्ट्री पर एक के बाद एक एक के बाद एक आक्रमण किया है साथ साथ की कर रहा हूं मैं साठ की भी करूंगा मैं मैं अपने भाषण में अंत में साठ साल की बात करूंगा आपको खुश करने के लिए आप ठहर जाइए मगर असंगठित जो सेक्टर है उस पर आपने आक्रमण किया कैसे किया नोटबंदी गलत जीएसटी गलत जीएसटी और कोरोना के समय जो सपोर्ट उनको देना था आपने नहीं दिया नतीजा क्या हुआ नतीजा यह हुआ कि आज 84 परसेंट हिंदुस्तान के लोगों की आमदनी घटी है और वो तेजी से गरीबी की ओर बढ़ रहे हैं यूपीए की सरकार ने आपने पूछा साठ साल की बात आपने कही यूपीए की सरकार ने तेईस करोड़ लोगों को गरीबी से निकाला था दस साल में हमारा आंकड़ा नहीं है हमारा आंकड़ा नहीं है हमारा आंकड़ा नहीं है 
आप हंसिए हमारा आंकड़ा नहीं है यह सच्चा आंकड़ा है 27 करोड़ लोगों को 27 करोड़ लोगों को हमने गरीबी से निकाला था और 23 करोड़ लोगों को आपने गरीबी में वापस डाल दिया सेम, सेम, सेम। और हो क्या रहा है फॉर्मल सेक्टर में मनोपलीज बन रही है किसी भी आप सेक्टर में देखिए और सबसे दो मनोपलिस्ट के बारे में थोड़ा सा बोलूंगा उसको वो कोरोना के समय अलग अलग वेरिएंट्स आते हैं आते हैं ना डेल्टा ओमिक्रॉन वो डबल ए वेरिएंट है और वो पूरा का पूरा हिंदुस्तान के कि जो अर्थव्यवस्था है उसके अंदर फैल रहा है आपने बात उठाई तो मैं उसके बारे में पहले बोल देता हूं एक व्यक्ति को नाम नहीं लूंगा एक व्यक्ति को हिंदुस्तान के सब पोर्ट्स ब्रांड हिंदुस्तान के सब पोर्ट्स हिंदुस्तान के सब एयरपोर्ट पावर ट्रांसमिशन माइनिंग ग्रीन एनर्जी गैस डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन एडिबल ऑयल जो भी हिंदुस्तान में होता है उधर अदानी जी दिखाई देते हैं और दूसरी साइड अंबानी जी पेट्रोकेमिकल्स टेलीकॉम रिटेल ई कॉमर्स में मनोपलियां तो पूरा का पूरा धन जो है चुने हुए लोगों के हाथ में जा रहा है और आपने जो असंगठित सेंट्रल सेक्टर को खत्म किया देखिए अगर आप इनफॉर्मल सेक्टर को खत्म कर देते और मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स आप क्रिएट कर देते तो फिर इतनी प्रॉब्लम नहीं आती फिर दो हिंदुस्तान नहीं बनते मगर आपने क्या किया आपने असंगठित सेक्टर को खत्म कर दिया नोटबंदी जीएसटी कोरोना सारे के सारे जो स्मॉल और मीडियम बिजनेस है उनको आपने बंद कर दिया बोलने दीजिए बोलने दीजिए सारे के सारे जो स्मॉल एंड मीडियम इंडस्ट्री है आपने उसको खत्म कर दिया नष्ट कर दिया अगर आप उनकी मदद करते और अगर आप उनकी मदद करते उनको सपोर्ट देते तो फिर मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर तैयार हो सकता था मगर जो लोग आपका मैन्युफैक्चरिंग सेक्टर बना सकते थे उनकी आपने उनको आपने खत्म कर दिया तो आज आज हिंदुस्तान में आप मेड इन इंडिया मेड इन इंडिया मेड इन इंडिया की बात करते रहते हो मेड इन इंडिया हो ही नहीं सकता आज बात खत्म हो गई है क्योंकि मेड इन इंडिया वाले हैं कौन मेड इन इंडिया वाले स्मॉल मीडियम वाले हैं उनको आपने खत्म कर दिया मेड इन इंडिया वाले कौन है असंगठित लोग हैं उनको आपने खत्म कर दिया हटा दिया परे कर दिया मेड इन इंडिया नहीं होने वाला है अरे भाई मेड इन इंडिया मेड इन इंडिया करने के लिए मेड इन इंडिया करने के लिए स्मॉल और मीडियम इंडस्ट्री को ही बड़ा करना पड़ेगा बिना स्मॉल और मीडियम इंडस्ट्री को सपोर्ट दिए मेड इन इंडिया हो ही नहीं सकता है और अगर आप पूछते हैं तो मैं आपको बताता हूं मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स की अगर हम बात करें तो मेरे पास आंकड़ा है यहां पे पिछले पांच साल में मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स 46 परसेंट कम हुए हैं 46 परसेंट ड्रॉप इन मैन्युफैक्चरिंग जॉब्स इन इंडिया व्हाई बिकॉज यू हैव डिस्ट्रॉइड ऑन ऑर्गेनाइज सेक्टर वाई बिकॉज यू डिस्ट्रॉइड एम एस एन एम ईस दैट इज वाई यू आर फोकसिंग कंप्लीटली on five or 10 people i don't have a problem with that i don't have a problem with big industry focus on them but please realize please realize that they cannot produce jobs for you small and medium industries the only people who can produce jobs for you that is the reality aur ho kya raha hai do hindustan ban rahe aap yahan pe bhashan dete rehte ho naya hindustan new india make in india 
और कौन से नारे हैं स्टार्टअप इंडिया आप ये बोलते रहते हो बोलते रहते हो बोलते रहते हो और देश में बेरोजगारी फैलती जा रही है और आप ये मत सोचिए आप ये मत सोचिए कि ये जो गरीब हिंदुस्तान है जिसको आप बना रहे हैं ये मत सोचिए कि ये चुप बैठा रहेगा ये मत सोचिए कि ये चुप बैठा रहेगा ये चुप नहीं बैठा रहेगा इस हिंदुस्तान को सब कुछ दिख रहा है इस हिंदुस्तान को दिख रहा है कि आज सुनिए इस हिंदुस्त इन लोगों को दिख रहा है कि आज ये आंकड़ा आप सुनिए ये आपकी सरकार की देन है ये आंकड़ा अच्छी तरह सुनिए इस गरीब हिंदुस्तान को दिख रहा है कि आज हिंदुस्तान के सौ सबसे अमीर लोगों के पास हिंदुस्तान के पचपन करोड़ लोगों से ज्यादा जायदाद है बात समझिए दस लोगों के पास चालीस परसेंट हिंदुस्तान से ज्यादा धन है दस लोगों के पास ये कैसे हुआ ये आपने किया ये नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने किया और तो मैं आपको एक सुझाव देता हूं प्रधानमंत्री जी को आपको सुझाव देता हूं ये जो दो आप हिंदुस्तान आप बना रहे हैं इन दो हिंदुस्तानों को जोड़ना का काम जोड़ने का काम जल्दी से शुरू कीजिए स्मॉल एंड मीडियम इंडस्ट्रीज की मदद करना शुरू कीजिए जो हमारे बेरोजगार युवाएं हैं उनकी मदद कीजिए और ये जो आप पूरा का पूरा धन इन्हीं पांच दस लोगों को दे रहे हो क्योंकि ये आपकी मार्केटिंग करते हैं आपको टीवी व्हाट्सएप फेसबुक पे लगाते हैं ये काम आप बंद कीजिए नहीं तो देश का नुकसान होगा आपका नहीं देश का नुकसान होगा तो पहला मेरा सुझाव यह है नंबर टू और नंबर थ्री भी है अभी आएगा वो और वो जो आपने साठ साल की बात कही थी वो नंबर थ्री में आएगा नाउ आई आई लाइक टू स्पीक देर आर आप तो नाउ 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 देर आर टू कंपीटिंग विजन ऑफ दिस कंट्री विच इज फ्रेंकली द मेन डिफरेंस बिटवीन अस एंड देम If you read the Constitution of India, you will find, and many of my colleagues who have not read it should look at it. You will find that India is described as a union of states. Yeah. India is not described as a nation; it is described as a union yeah. of states. Yes, 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 yes. What does that mean? that means my brother from tamil nadu has to have to others has to have the same right as my brother from maharashtra as my sister from maharashtra as my brother from uttar pradesh as my brother from bihar as my sister from manipur nagaland mizoram that's what it means what it means jammu kashmir of course jammu kashmir nagaland of course andaman nicobar of course that is lakshadweep now what is the difference you have to understand this this is a serious matter i would like to have your view on it and i would like this parliament house to start serious discussions instead of the type of discussions that we having that is why it is serious it is serious and i would like a serious response right what i heard frankly what i heard in the first address today was not serious what i heard mr devedi say was not serious it did not behoove this house it was not at the standard that this house should be used to it is not at the standard that india should watch now let me come back to the discussion let me come back to the discussion speaker sir there are two visions there are there are there are two visions of this country one vision that it is a union of states meaning it is a negotiation meaning it is a conversation yes. meaning i go to my brother in tamil nadu and i say what do you want and he says this is what i want and then he asks me what do you want and i say this is what i want it is a partnership 
it is not a kingdom yeah. remember that yeah. you will never you will never ever in your entire life rule over the people of tamil nadu yeah. it cannot be done you will never ever in your life rule over these other people please please listen to what i'm saying people of the states of india it has never been done in 3000 years never ever the only way india has been ruled and you can look at any empire you want you can look at ashoka the great you can look at the mauryas you can look at the guptas you can look at anyone you want it has always been ruled by conversation and negotiation now what is the problem the problem is you people are confused the problem is you people think that these languages these cultures these histories you think that you you think that you can suppress them you have no idea of history you have no idea what you are dealing with because the people of tamil nadu have inside their heart the idea of tamil nadu the idea of the tamil language and then also the idea of india do not be confused the people of kerala have the idea of i am not i am telling you the truth the people of the people of kerala the people of kerala have a culture i am now a member of parliament of kerala i understand it slightly better they have a culture they have a dignity they have a history the people like like the gentleman said the people of rajasthan have a culture have a history have a tradition have a language they have a way of life this is like a bouquet of flowers yeah. Yeah. this is our strength yeah. i learn from the people of tamil nadu i learn from the people of rajasthan i learn even from you every day i learn from you i do it's not funny it's not funny i learn from you right it's not funny anyway there is another vision a vision that india can be ruled by a stick from the center yeah. you people have no idea of history because every time it has been attempted that stick has been broken and smashed now now what is happening as a result of your flawed vision of the country two indias are of course being created two indias are of course being created speaker sir adhyaksh mahoday who is going up idhar so what is happening what is happening as a result of this flawed vision two indias two india us pe bhi bolta hu us pe bhi bol deta hu main us pe bhi bol deta hu main emergency pe bhi bol deta hu koi problem nahi hai main bolne se nahi darta hu आप उनका मैं मैं डरता नहीं मैं बोलने से आप एनीवे सो देर आर देर आर टू विजन वन इज अनियन ऑफ स्टेट्स यूनियन ऑफ लैंग्वेजेस यूनियन ऑफ कल्चर्स ए बुके ऑफ ब्यूटिफुल फ्लावर्स दैट कैन चैलेंज एनी पावर इन द वर्ल्ड नो पावर इन द वर्ल्ड हैज एवर बीन एबल टू चैलेंज दिस बुके ऑफ फ्लावर्स नाउ देर इज अनदर विजन ए सेंट्रलाइजिंग विजन the vision of a king the idea of a king which the which the congress removed in 
We smashed that idea of a king. Now that idea of a king has come back. That there is a king, a Shahin Shah, a ruler of rulers, a master of masters. Now what is happening? Now, now speaker sir, now speaker sir, what is happening? Now, now speaker. Now, now, now speaker. Now, speaker, sir, what is happening as a result of this flawed vision? What is happening is that the instruments of the conversation between our states, the instruments of the conversation between our peoples, what we call the institutions of our country, are being attacked and captured by one idea. So, for example, Today, the idea, the idea of Tamil Nadu, the idea of Tamil Nadu is excluded from Indian institutions. They can keep coming to you again and again and again and again and saying, neat, 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 neat. And you will say, no, get out of here. Right? They do not have a voice in your framework. The farmers of Punjab can stand up and say, we do not agree with these three laws. They do not have a voice in your framework. Only the king has the voice. The farmers can sit for one year. They can sit for one year outside in Corona. They can die, doesn't matter. The king does not agree. You do not listen to anybody. And even all of you, my dear brothers and sisters in the BJP. I, I, saw my, I saw my Dalit colleague speak today, Paswanji. I saw him. Yes. He knows the history of the Dalits. He knows who has oppressed the Dalit for 3,000 years. And he is speaking with a hesitancy. He is speaking without. I am proud of him. I am proud of this gentleman. He has spoken to me what is in his heart. I am proud of this man, but he is in the wrong party. Don't worry, Gabrai Mat. Bad. No. Look, look, speaker sir, speaker sir, speaker sir, I am a democratic person. I will allow him to speak. Ye, suno, admit. Ye, aap kisi ko ijazat nahi de sakte, ye adhikar mera hai. Please bait jaiye. Main, aap wo ijazat de sakte hain, kya asan ko? Wo ijazat dene ka adhikar nahi hai. ये ये अधिकार आसन का है किसको इजाजत देनी है किसको नहीं इजाजत मान नहीं रहा हूं लड़की प्लीज बैठ जाइए मैं दूंगा आपको मौका मैं आपको मौका दूंगा सो स्पीकर सर आप बोलिए सो स्पीकर सर अरे आप बोलिए बोलिए मान्य सदस्य प्लीज बैठिए मैं आपको मौका दूंगा बोलते रहें आप Speaker, sir. Speaker, sir. So this confused ideology, this confused understanding of the nation of India is playing havoc with this country. And I'll give you examples. The judiciary, the election commission, Pegasus, these are all instruments of destroying the voice of the union of states. When you apply Pegasus on an Indian politician, when the prime minister personally goes to Israel and authorizes the use of Pegasus in India, 
He is attacking the people of Tamil Nadu. He is attacking the people of Assam. He is attacking the people of Kerala. He is attacking the people of Bengal. Take me point of order. Point of order. 3521. Yes, speaker, sir. 3521 कहता है कि a member while speaking shall not refer to any matter of fact on which a judicial decision is pending. Supreme Court में ये pending है, sir. Sir. और यदि इनको सुप्रीम कोर्ट पर विश्वास है कोर्ट पर विश्वास है तो ये अपना फोन जो है जमा करें पहले ये शामिल हो सर ये पहले उसके इंक्वायरी में शामिल हो क्योंकि इनका नाम भी पेगासस में है सो कॉल्ड ये जो कह रहे हैं इसीलिए ये पेगासस का नाम नहीं ले सकते सर ये कॉपरेट नहीं कर पर्टिकुलर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन has captured the institutional framework of the country and is attacking the voice of the different states of this country and my fear is that you will get a reaction from that voice my fear is that this attack that you are carrying out on the institutional framework of this country is going to get a response from the union of states yeah, yeah, yeah. and you are fiddling i understand this you might not appreciate it but my great grandfather spent 15 years in jail yeah. building this thing yeah, yeah. my grandmother was shot 32 times and my father was blown into bits yeah. so i understand a little bit about what this country is my blood has been sacrificed not by me by my great grandfather by my grandmother by my father for this country so i understand what it is and you are fiddling with something very very dangerous and i am advising you stop because if you do not stop yes you will create a problem you have already started creating the problem The problem has already started in the northeast. The problem has already started in Tamil Nadu. You're not. It's not. You're not visible. It's not visible to you right now. Jammu Kashmir, which I will speak about, which is my third point. Now, what you're fiddling with is extremely dangerous, and it demonstrates a complete lack of understanding of history. please this evening go back and look at all the empires that have ever ruled india look at them carefully you will find that every single one of them is a union of states there is not a single empire there was a reason ashok used to go and put his pillars everywhere because it was a union of states where ashok the great king respected everybody you are disrespecting everybody disrespect no. me i don't care yeah. it doesn't matter to me but you cannot disrespect the people of this country well said, well said. right now final and i think one of the more important parts of my speech actually i want to say one other thing which which i demand an apology from the home minister and this represents again the idea of a union of states versus the idea of a king now a few days ago some political leader i'm not going to name came to me from manipur and he was very agitated i spoke to him i said why are you agitated my brother and he says rahul ji i have never felt as insulted as i have a few days ago i said why he said rahul ji a delegation of manipuris political leaders senior leaders went to see the home minister outside his house
have a few days ago. I said, why? He said, Rahul ji, a delegation of Manipuris, political leaders, senior leaders went to see the Home Minister. Outside his house, I have a few days ago. I said, why? He said, Rahul ji, a delegation of Manipuris, political leaders, senior leaders went to see the Home Minister. Outside his house, have a few days ago. I said, why? He said, Rahul ji, a delegation of Manipuris, political leaders, senior leaders went to see the Home Minister. Outside his house, Sit down, Mr. Goyal, sit down. Mr. Goyal, sit down. Speaker, sir. 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 Speaker, it reflects a mentality. It reflects a sense that I am bigger than you. You are nobody. I am everybody. That is why I will wear my shoes and you will not. Anyway, anyway, going back to the main point. Now, and the final most important point. My understanding is that the RSS and the BJP is playing with the foundations of our country. Yes. And they are weakening the foundations of our country. Yes. They are weakening, they are weakening the links between our people. Yes. They are weakening the links between our languages. Yes. Now, they have further weakened the country, they have further weakened the country by ensuring that not a single Indian youngster can get a job. Yes. So today, Unlike a decade ago, 15 years ago, India is weak. Ask yourselves, ask yourselves why you were not able to get a guest on Republic Day. Ask yourself that question. Don't look surprised. Ask yourself that question. What is happening is that India today is completely isolated. You, we are completely isolated and surrounded. We are surrounded in Sri Lanka, Nepal, Burma, Pakistan, Afghanistan, China, everywhere we are surrounded. And our opponents understand our position. Please let me speak because I'm saying something very serious. Right? I'm saying something very serious. Let me say, we are, we have been weakened. The conversation between our people is not taking place. Our institutions are under attack and we are completely surrounded. The Chinese have a very clear vision of what they want to do. They are very, very clear about what they want to do. And one second, please. The single biggest, you can ask anybody who understands, the single biggest strategic goal of India's foreign policy has been to keep Pakistan and China separate. This, this is fundamental for India. And what you have done, what you have done is you have brought them together. Today, do not be under any illusion. Do not underestimate the force that is standing in front of you. 
Do not underestimate the power that stands in front of us. Do not underestimate it. You have brought Pakistan and China together. And this is the single biggest crime that you could commit against the people of India. China has a clear vision. And I can clearly see, without any confusion in my mind, that China has a plan. China has a plan. I can see without any doubt that the Chinese, please, we are all nationalists. So let us discuss properly. I can see that China has a clear-cut plan. The, the foundations of their plan have been put in place in Dhoklam and in Ladakh. Do not underestimate what we are facing. This, this is a very, very serious threat to the Indian nation. This is a very, very serious threat to the Indian nation. We have made, we have made huge, huge strategic mistakes in Jammu and Kashmir. We have made huge strategic mistakes in our foreign policy. And if we do not correct those mistakes, what are the mistakes I have just told you? You have brought China and Pakistan together. You have brought China and Pakistan together. You have made, you have taken the concept of two different fronts and convict, con converted it into one, one unified front. Yes. And by the way, in case you haven't realized it, uh, in case you haven't understood what's going on, it is very clear that the Chinese and the Pakistanis are planning. Look at the weapons that they are buying. Look at their activity. Look at, look at the way they are talking. Look at who they are speaking to. I am clearly stating in the House of Parliament that we have made a massive blunder. And we need to make sure, absolutely sure, that we can defend ourselves against the Chinese. Please remember what I am saying. Because the Chinese will act. Remember what I am saying. And remember that you will be responsible for anything that happens. That is why it is important that as a nation we start this conversation. It is important as a nation that you listen to what we say. Because we have experience. We have understanding. You might not think so. But we have people on this side who understand these things. Have great understanding. Use us. Use us. I can see that some of you are understanding what I'm saying. I'm happy. I'm happy. I can see. So these are the three points I wanted to make today. The nation is now at risk. The nation is at risk. The nation is at risk from outside. From inside. The nation is at risk from inside. And that is a very dangerous place for a nation to be. And I don't like it. I am very uncomfortable with my nation, with my beloved country standing where it is standing. Completely isolated on the outside, fighting on the inside, institutions captured, states not able to speak to each other. This worries me. It frightens me for my country. And so that is why I thought it was important that I speak today. I know, I know that many of you will just rubbish what I'm saying. I understand it. That's, that's what you've been told to do. And I'm happy to let you do it. But remember what I said. You are putting this nation this wonderful nation and its people at huge risk. Stop. Thank you. Excellent. Kamlesh Paswanji.